listen, listen. The man of God has a message from God for every one of you. Every one of us. And you should be all ears to hear. And the more you hear and understand and comprehend, you are going to receive in Jesus' name. Yeah. We have in our midst tonight a generalissimo, a captain of God's people. He is a teacher. He is an evangelist. He is, a, he is an apostle. He is a prophet. He is a pastor par excellence. I am talking about no other person than Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuye, sir. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will start stage tonight. Whatsoever you ask, believe it. You will receive. You have a testimony. What is the person I'm talking about? Right? Testimony tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this great day. The day of redemption, full redemption, free redemption, and redemption from every problem, every yoke, every demonic affliction, every sin, every sickness. Tonight, manifest yourself to everyone in Jesus' name. Your people have come here and in all the other locations. They are asking from you. They are believing you. Tonight is a night of redemption for everyone. Yes. Testimony in every mouth. Yes. Joy in every heart. Yes. Total freedom for everyone. Yes. The Lord transform your life tonight. Yes. Lord confirm it in every life. Yes. In Jesus name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we begin, this great crusade, global crusade, full freedom and full deliverance and full redemption for everyone through faith in Christ. Understand, tonight, the power of the Lord will touch you. That great problem, that seemingly incurable problem. Tonight, the Lord will remove it from your life in Jesus' name. He will touch you. It will touch your child. It will touch your parents. It will touch everyone you are concerned about in Jesus' name. Tonight, I'm speaking to you on full and free redemption, full, nothing missing tonight. Everything full. And there's nothing you are going to pay, the Lord will give it to you free. And it is through faith in Christ. It happened to the children of Israel. It happened to the people of the New Testament. This is our time. This is my time. Yes. You will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. Yes. Let me read the scripture to you from Exodus chapter 6. We're reading from verse 6. Exodus 6, verse 6. Therefore say unto the children of Israel. Now they are gone. We are the people here now. I am the Lord. I will bring you out. From under your bodies, the bodies of the Egyptians. And I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you 
Praise the Lord. You. You. He says, I will redeem you with a stretch out arm and with great judgments. Look at verse 7 there. It says, and I will take you to me for a people. You become the people of God. Children of God. I said, that's what you are going to be tonight. I am a child of God. An evil power will not be able to touch you anymore. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the bodies of the Egyptians. All bodies in your life, they are taken away tonight. And then in verse 8, it tells us, And I will bring you in. It brings you out, out of your problem, and it brings you in to his presence. It brings you out of your sin. It brings you into salvation. It brings you out of evil. And it brings you into the goodness of God. It, it brings you out of everything that has been pursuing your life. And now it brings you to the land of promise tonight. And then it says, I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to give you to Abraham and to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an inheritance. You have an inheritance tonight. I said you have an inheritance tonight. And then he says, I am the Lord. He has introduced himself. I am the Lord, the creator. I am the Lord, your redeemer. I am the Lord, your savior. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord. And whatever it is you need tonight, you'll find the Lord is present there. Amen. Present with power. Present with authority. It will do wonders in your life. Amen. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 21. I'll just read it out to you if you don't have your Bible there. It says, I will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked. Amen. The wicked that think they will rough handle your life. They will destroy your life. They will blindfold you. You'll not be able to see the future. Tonight, your deliverance has come. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Mr. Terrible will not have power over your life anymore. Madam Terrible will not have power over your life anymore. I can just see the Lord by your side there saying, pay attention, tonight I come to deliver you. Tonight I come to rescue you. Tonight I come to redeem you. Praise the Lord. All those tears are wiped away in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 31, Jeremiah 31, verse 11. Look at this. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob. What's your name? What's your name there? For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Don't worry anymore. All the powers that are bigger, higher, stronger than yourself, tonight you are delivered. As I said, we're talking about full redemption and free redemption through faith in Christ. I'm going to, you know, divide the message to three parts. One part now, another part, and then another part. And then at the final part, you got it. Today, today. Tonight, tonight. Full redemption. Free redemption. Total redemption. Number one, the author and the finisher of our priceless redemption. The author, the originator, the creator, the one that actually springs it up, the author and the finisher of our priceless redemption. Number two, the assurance, as we see down there, or maybe you are standing up there, have the assurance and settled mind tonight your deliverance is tonight there is no go and come 
anywhere you are online just pay attention now and stop every other thing and give yourself to this there is assurance tonight the assurance and the foundation of our promised redemption assurance somebody say assurance there's assurance coming from heaven upon your life tonight that you are going to be redeemed. Yeah. Number three, the acceptance. Now it's available. The Lord has made it available. Now at the time, at the right time, you will now accept. You'll say, yes, Lord, I believe. You died for me on the cross of Calvary. Yes, I believe you are the author, you are the finisher, you are the provider, and you have given me assurance. Already I have a solid foundation for the promised redemption. Now I accept. The moment you accept, it is done. Amen. Salvation, done. Amen. Healing, done. Amen. Deliverance, done. Amen. Miracle, Amen. done in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The acceptance and fulfillment of our precious redemption. Let's look at number one there. Number one, we're looking at the author and the finisher of our priceless redemption. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, you need healing. Looking unto Jesus, you need salvation. Looking unto Jesus, you need redemption, looking unto Jesus, and you need provision so that a white poverty out of your life. Looking unto Jesus, you need power to live a life, a life that is strong, a life that is achieving. Looking unto Jesus, as you look to Jesus tonight, there is no disappointment. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The faith that gets salvation is the author. The faith that gets healing is the author. The faith that gets redemption is the author. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down. And is set down now. If you've gone to the farm, Early in the morning, and you do everything you intended to do, all the weeds are taken off, all the crops are affected, and you bring them into the barn, now you can sit down. Because you finished. Jesus Christ on the cross said, it is finished. He looked at you, and he said, your problems finished. Your sin, finished. Your perdition, finished. The Lord, finished. All the attacks and affliction, finished. Blindness, finished. Sickness, finished. After he finished everything, he now sat down. He said, now you can take everything that belongs to you. He is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's done. Amen. Look at John chapter 19, verse 30. Then Jesus, therefore, when he had received the vinegar, he said, he said, it is finished. Bad luck, finished. Amen. Evil, finished. Amen. Demonic attack, affliction, finished. Amen. All the harassment of the enemy finished in your life. Amen. That's redemption. That's redemption. When he finishes all the problem of sin, redemption. When he takes all your sicknesses away, that's redemption. And when he takes all the things, the devil has been putting before you, and he said, you will not cross over. You will not live a happy life. You will not live a righteous life. And he torments your life. And when Jesus said, now enough is enough. In your life, enough is enough. No more crying. No more rolling on the ground. No more going here and there. 
no more suffering. Enough is enough. It is finished. I praise God for you tonight. It is finished. Your heart attack, it's finished. That incurable disease, it is finished. There's priceless redemption for everyone, even tonight, in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Surely, there's no doubt tonight. Any doubt out there tonight? I said any doubt out there tonight? Surely, he has borne our griefs. Our griefs for everyone. Now we're going to make it personal. He has borne my griefs. Why don't you say that? Your sorrow, say that. He has my sorrow. And all the heavy load, he all the crying, he surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He came so that in your life, all that thing that causes sorrow, he'll carry everything away. Yeah. Failure, he'll carry everything away. Weeping, he'll carry everything away. Suffering, he'll carry everything away. Falling under the boot of the devil, marching over your head and marching over your life. Tonight, he comes to carry everything away. It's going to set you free. I said it's going to set you free. We did esteem him smitten, stricken of God and afflicted, the smiting. The striking, the weeping that shall come upon you, he put Christ on your page. And he puts you on the page of Christ. The good thing that he had is transferred to you. The bad thing that you have is transferred unto him. And then the good life, the happy life, the righteous life, the right life, and the progressive life. Christ would normally live, all that is transferred to you. It comes with the redemption. And as we say tonight, Lord, I believe you did it for me. It will happen. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. Make it personal. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. Look at this, look at this. And with his stripes, with his stripes, with his stripes, you are healed in Jesus' name. If you have read the story before, before they took him to the cross to die, they tied him to a pole and they whipped him. And all those stripes, they are made for you. To take away cancer from you. To take away blindness from you. To take away deafness from you. To take away paralysis from you. Tonight is that night. By with his stripes, we are healed. On my left hand side, there, healing coming your way. In front of me, there, healing coming your way. On my right hand side, there, healing coming your way. Online, everywhere you are, healing is coming your way now in Jesus' name. Well, just you remember last month, February, we had the crusade in uh, where? Good history students, you know the history. We had the crusade in Taraba. Many things happen. Blind eyes opened. Dead, dead people. Those who are dead, they were healed. And they counted. One, two, three, even to ten. And great, great things happened. But now, this is a testimony 
that happened this last February in Taraba, Taraba State. This woman was born lame. She had never taken a step in her life. And now she is 35 years of age. And as we prayed and we mentioned the name of Jesus, think of a woman that had never taken a step in 35 years of her life, the power of God came upon her. She rose up from that paralysis and then she began to walk. Began to walk. That same power is here tonight. That same power will take all your sicknesses away in Jesus' name. Power. Somebody shout power. That power struck her. She got up and then remember 35 years she had never taken a step and then the Lord did it. If the Lord did that for her, what cannot the Lord do for you tonight? Your blind eyes, it will open. Your paralyzed legs will receive strength. Your heart, they say it's a lad, everything will become normal. The bleeding, everything will stop tonight in Jesus' name. And of course, of course, of course, all your sins, every bad thing you have ever done since you were born, everything will be taken away from you and laid on Christ tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. All, all, all we like sheep have gone astray. You are not the only one. Everybody around you, everybody around us, everyone went astray. But God loves you all the same. He doesn't love the bad things you've done, but he loves you. He doesn't love your sin or sinning, but he loves you. That's why he says, I love you, and I will not allow sin to destroy you. It will take your sin away. Yeah. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone, everyone, to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, on Christ. Praise the Lord. All that load and habit of sin, he takes away from you. Yeah. And he puts it on Christ. And then he says, he laid it on him, the iniquity of us all. Look at that sentence, the first word, all. The last word, all. There is no exemption. It's for everyone. All at the beginning, all at the end, the Lord has come to bless you. He has come to forgive you. He has come to set you free. Redemption. 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 Where? I said where? Where will it come tonight? Praise the Lord. Redemption is coming to you. Isaiah chapter 45. Reading from verse 22. It says, look unto me. It says, don't doubt. Don't allow all the bad, bad things you've done make you to, you know, slack back and say, I'm too bad. You are not too bad. No matter how bad you are, and no matter how good you think you are, redemption has come to you tonight. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth, at the Alpha location here by El Satid, it will touch everyone. In all the regions of the localities, all the communities of our country, Nigeria, it will touch everyone. And of all the places in Africa, in Asia, in America, in Canada, everywhere in Europe and in Russia, everywhere is coming to everyone right now. Look unto me, all look unto me and be ye saved. Look unto me and be ye healed. Look unto me and be ye delivered. Look unto me and be ye blessed. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. What others cannot do. He says, I am the Lord. He will do it. 
the redemption others cannot give. It says, I am the Lord, he'll give it to you tonight. Congratulations, your day of redemption has now come. Look at number two here. Number two is the assurance and foundation of a promised redemption. Redemption that is promised. The Lord promised the redemption. And he says, now, as you look at the foundation and you step on that foundation tonight, redemption for you. Yeah. Assurance. There's no doubt in my heart that tonight you are the one that God has ordained redemption for. Yeah. I said you are the one. Yeah. I am the one. Yeah. The Lord has promised redemption for me. Yeah. It's done in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at something in Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 18. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. That by two immutable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have strong, a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. The promise of redemption he has given us is so sure because God is greater than angels. God is greater than the best of men on earth. Our God cannot lie. What he said he will do for you tonight, he'll do it for you. What he said he will give you tonight, he'll give it to you. Everyone, everyone. And he says it's impossible for God to lie. Every promise of God will be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Every promise of God will be fulfilled in my life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Look at verse 19. In verse 19 it says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Which hope we have, we have the hope. And it's an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Sure and steadfast. Your redemption, sure and steadfast. Your salvation, sure and steadfast. And your desires, answers to your prayer tonight, sure and steadfast. You are going back home with joy in your heart. And which entereth into that which is within the veil. Then in verse 20, it tells us, whither the forerunner is for us the forerunner is for us the forerunner is for me entered even jesus when he said it is finished then he went to heaven to the presence of god and then he mentioned your name he said for that man i finished it for that woman i finished all the sorrows and then he stands before the heavenly father to make sure that what he has purchased for you comes to you directly. Yeah. You will not miss it. Yeah. He said he's made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And then now we come to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, looking at verse 9, it says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation of God standeth sure. The foundation of your redemption from the hand of God stands very sure tonight. Having they seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. The Lord knows me. The Lord knows me. I belong to him. I don't belong to Satan. And you know what Satan has done? He came to steal you, to destroy you, and to kill you. But that Satan that stole you away tonight, the Lord will break his hand away from your life. Yeah. Then you come to the Lord and say, Lord, 
this is my name. I'm sorry, I went astray, I went far, but now I've come back home. And the Lord will receive you with joy. And the Lord will take all your guilt, all your condemnation. He'll take everything away. And the angels will sing tonight because of you. He has come back home. She has come back home. And there will be celebration in heaven for you tonight in Jesus' name. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that namest the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen? Amen? You see, the devil introduces all those things to destroy our lives, and we didn't know eating up, eating up our lives. And, you know, the more you go, it's like, you know, when uh, we set a trap for a rabbit. And then we put something in, uh, that the rabbit likes pleasure to the rabbit. We put it on that trap. And the rabbit does not see the trap. The rabbit only sees what you put there, the bait. And is thinking that uh, what kind of uh, person is this that puts all this there? And he puts uh, even the food, the bait, he puts it very well where he can easily see it. He says, thank you very much, I'll be hungry, and now he comes there, and then as he tries to take uh, that thing in life, bam, the trap catches him, catches her. That's what the devil is trying to do. You think the devil likes you, and then he gives that, that thing. So you will enjoy this one. You will appreciate this one. This one, you will be very, very happy. And then you will say, thank you very much. The devil is not kind. He knows what he's doing. Huh? He's setting a trap for you. That trap, the Lord will destroy it tonight. <laughs> And all those things the devil has put there, thinking that you will nibble on this, you will take this one, and he thinks it will catch you, it will never catch me again. He will never catch me again. Say it for yourself, he will never catch me again. That's what the Lord is saying, depart from that iniquity. And as you do that tonight, the promised redemption will come to you. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. It will come. Yeah. Set tonight. Yeah. Forgiving tonight. Yeah. Set free tonight. Yeah. Healed tonight. Yeah. Delivered tonight. Yeah. I praise the Lord for you. Tonight is your night of redemption. Yeah. We come to number three now. Number three, the acceptance and fulfillment of our precious redemption. Acceptance, acceptance that you say, yes, Lord, I know this is the day of my salvation. And this is the day of my healing. This is the day of my total redemption. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians Chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 2. It says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. He knows your desire. He knows the thought of your heart. He knows that you want to come back to real life. And the Lord said, I've heard your desires. I've seen your thoughts. And tonight, as you come out of your darkness and you come to the light of Christ, the Lord is waiting for you. He will receive you. Amen. I have heard thee. In a time accepted, in the day of salvation, have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. When is your redemption? Now is the accepted time. When is your salvation? Now. Now is the accepted time. And when is your healing? Now. Now is your healing. And if there's anything in your life, 
that is dead, completely dead, when will life come to you? No. Or having uh, that great miracle explosion crusade in Lagos. And there was a woman pregnant, but the baby inside had died. And she went to the hospital, and the doctors, they tried to hear the beating of the heart, dead. And all they could do was to try to evacuate that fetus, the unborn baby. And then a miracle explosion prayer was going on, like it's going to go on tonight upon you. Yeah. And then we said... In Jesus' name, that in Jesus' name, that dead child inside woke up. That's the, that's the by answer clapping. And life came to that dead unborn baby. And the doctors, they were surprised. They said, the child is now alive. It happened to them out there. It's now your turn. Where are you? I said it's now your turn. Where are you? I said it's now your turn. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation for you. I said for you. How does that happen? Very simple. That redemption are, means receive the propitiation. The propitiation is what Christ has done to cover your sin, to cleanse your sin, and to take away all your transgression. Receive that. Say, yes, Lord, I know it's for me. He embrace the prince. Is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Embrace him. Accept him. And say Christ is mine. Because Christ is mine. Salvation is mine. Because Christ is mine. Healing is mine. He embrace the prince. D. Demand his pardon. Demand his pardon. You come to the Lord. And you say Lord. I am the one the preacher was talking about. I am the one that needs pardon, forgiveness, salvation. I want all my condemnation to be taken away, and tonight it will happen. He experience is purging. Experience is purging. Tonight it will take the brush of heaven. I'll brush every, every dirty thing out of your life. Yeah. You will not feel any pain at all. It will do it miraculously. And all the dirty, dirty, defiling things tonight, the Lord says, I've been waiting for you. Like you couldn't wash yourself when you are a baby. And mommy will have to say, you know, scrape up all those things and wash you, all the wounds and everything. Mommy will wash everything up. Heaven will wash away your sin tonight. Experience is purging. M, maintain his purpose. The purpose, Christ came to this world for this purpose that he might destroy the works of the devil. I'm smiling for you. All the works of the devil, the purpose of the Lord is to destroy everything out of your life. Wonderful night for you. Yeah. Blessed night for you. Yeah. And now you maintain, you say, the reason I come is for the purpose that all the works of the devil will be destroyed out of my life. It's done. Yeah. P, personal lives is promises. Personalize. That's the redemption. It says, I will redeem thee. Personalize that. He's talking about me. I will save you out of the hand of the terrible. Personalize that that is for you. And I will redeem you from the hand of the one that is stronger than you are. 
cancer is stronger than you are, but the Lord said, tonight, he will deliver you from that cancer. Personalize his promises, and then cheat there is take your portion. Take your portion. You see the ocean there, deep and wide, and there's water there to satisfy everybody. Take your portion. Take your portion. There's no discrimination about, you know, the water. And then you can even say, make a pipe and get that water into your house. The water of life will come to you today. You will personalize the promises and you will take your portion. Your portion of salvation, take it. Your portion of healing, take it. Your portion of deliverance, take it. And then I inherit his peace. There's no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. But now you come out of wickedness and you're going to inherit his peace. There'll be peace in your heart. There'll be peace in your soul. There'll be peace between you and your wife, between your wife and yourself, and between your husband and yourself. There'll be peace in your family. There'll be peace all the way through. And all the things that torment your heart and that will make you to run away from the path of progress, all those things that are disturbing your peace, everything it will take away. You inherit a peace. Now, all there is to open Open up to his presence. Open up to his presence. He says, I'm here. I stand at your door. And I'm knocking at your door. If anyone opens the heart, he hears my voice, and he opens the heart, I will come in. You will take Jesus, the healer, back home tonight. You take Jesus, the savior, back home tonight. And then, and there is never doubt his power. Never doubt his power. He has power to raise the dead. Your problem is not as serious as that. He has power to mend broken bones. Maybe your problem is not as serious as that. Never doubt his power. That power is coming to you now. Amen. Where are you? I said, where are you? Let heaven see your hand. Where are you? Let Jesus himself, who comes in now to save you, to redeem you, to set you free, let him see you there. Tonight is your night of redemption in Jesus' name. God bless you. I know you are standing up. It says stand up, stand up for Jesus, soldiers of the cross. I thank God for you. But let's see now for a moment now. Now. This is the time, the time of your redemption, the time of your freedom, the time of your salvation, and the time of your healing. But we're going to do each one after the other. Forgiveness is coming to you now. Salvation is coming to you now. All your sins, all your transgressions, all your iniquities are laid on Jesus. And if you say, I accept that, that is mine. Wherever you are, it's bowed and eyes closed. Just raise up your hand and say, yes, Lord, I am here. Redemption, I want it. Salvation, I want it. And I want forgiveness for all my sins, all my condemnation, all my guilt. I want everything to be taken away. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You're listening over the radio. Just raise up your hand there. Over the television, raise up your hand. Online, anywhere you are. Redemption, salvation, forgiveness, freedom from sin. By the power of the Lord is coming to you now. Anywhere you are, just raise up your hand. If you're raising up your hand, and please stand up now. You're raising up your hand. You're saying uh, that redemption is mine. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone sees you right there now. And Jesus is smiling at you right now. He says it is finished. It will finish all condemnation. It will finish all the guilt in your life. You're raising up your hand. Stand up now and say, yes, Lord, I want that redemption. Yes, Lord, I want that salvation. Yes, Lord, I want your 
pardon. And I embrace that now. I accept that now. And I want the blood of Jesus to, to, to so wash me and cleanse me that all the guilt will be taken away. As we are standing up, just tell the Lord, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. And Lord, I receive it now, that redemption that you purchased, that redemption that you provided, that redemption that you promised, that redemption that is precious, I receive that now. As we are standing up, I'm going to pray with you. Raise up that hand again while you are standing up. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a loving God you are. What a wonderful God you are. You search we should look unto you all the ends of the earth and then you say we shall be saved we shall be forgiven i pray for every brother every sister every young man every young woman and even the older people i pray for everyone according to your promise grant them redemption for their souls now in jesus name forgive all their sins take away the guilt Take away the condemnation and give them salvation and the joy of salvation now in Jesus' name. And I pray that the peace that comes with salvation will settle in every heart. And the assurance of salvation will be given to everyone now without exception. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise, for no reason, cast away, you receive everyone that comes. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord Jesus is saved. Thank you, Lord, for their salvation. Thank you, Lord, for their redemption. Confirm it in every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. Say, it is done. Keep on standing, keep on standing. Our counselors are there and uh, they will spend a little time with you getting all the information that they need so that we can follow up on you for your progress in the faith later. Our state of ourselves will take over now and then after we finish this, then I'm coming back and every disease, every sickness in your body, the Lord will take away tonight. Keep on standing, keep on standing. Our ushers, our counselors are there by your side. They will give you a card. And inside that card, you will just put down your name. Very important, your full names. And you write your address. Their address should be what people know about around you, your address, where you live. If there is no specific address, you can include the address of somebody around there that is well known where you live. Just include maybe a compound, maybe an area where you live in that place. Describe the place. Don't forget, you have been born again, you have given your life to Christ, and so everything you are going to write there on the card will be right, will be true, and so you write your phone number, you will write your email address, if you have 